When the Romans started to take over what is now France and England, they met a mysterious group of priests called the Druids. The clergy had a lot of power and could get all of the Celts to rise up. The Romans could only see one way out, to kill everyone. Under the cover of the morning fog, several thousand Roman soldiers row across the narrow strait that separates the island of Anglesey from Wales. The army sends out scouts to look at the dark island that can be seen ahead. The Romans are on their way to fight the Druids of Britain, who are an enemy that few Romans have ever seen and who scares even veterans of war. Anglesey is the stronghold of the powerful clergy, who have joined forces with Celtic warriors from the mainland to make one last stand against the Romans. The sound of the Celts' war horns echoes across the water as the water splashes. Several thousand warriors stand on the island, ready for battle. They beat their swords on their shields in a rhythm. The cloaked druids who use loud shouts and chants to call on the forces of darkness to fight the enemy are even scarier to the Romans. Women dance as if they are in ecstasy between the rows of warriors to get the men ready for battle. The invasion of the Isle of Anglesey in 61 AD was the end of more than 100 years of bitter fighting between Rome and the Celtic Druids. Because of their religious power, the Druids were able to rally Celts from different tribes to fight against the Romans. The Romans have a reputation for being tolerant of other religions and their priests and for willingly adopting them. But the Druids are so strong that Rome can only think of one solution, getting rid of the priesthood. A clergy surrounded by mystery. When ancient Greek writers first wrote about the Celts in the 4th century BC, the Druids were probably already an important part of Celtic society and religion. The Romans were the first people to talk about Druids. They thought that the priesthood began in Britannia and then spread to the Celts in Gaul, which is now France. It's hard to say if that's true or if the clergy really came from Central Europe. Archaeologists have found a lot of evidence of the Druids' religious sites in the British Isles and Ireland. The word Druid comes from the Irish Gaelic word dor, which means both oak tree and wisdom. Julius Caesar was the first Roman to give a detailed account of the Druids in relation to the conquest of Gaul. He wrote that the Druids and the nobles were in charge of the Gauls. The priests had a lot of power over the Gauls because they were the only ones who could offer public and private sacrifices to the gods. The whole country of the Gauls is very superstitious, Caesar said. The field lord said that only druids could know about the world of gods because priests were not allowed to write down what they knew. Everything was instead to be said out loud, so it took about 20 years to learn how to be a druid. Authors from Greece and Rome say that the druids thought the soul was immortal and moved to a new body after a certain amount of time. The clergy didn't hold religious ceremonies in fancy temples. Instead, they did so in oak groves and simple stone circles in the open air. But the Romans and Greeks also said that the Celts did something very cruel, they sacrificed people. Julius Caesar wrote that all Gauls were very religious, and that people who were sick were in danger of being killed in war sacrificed people or swore to do so to get help from the gods, and the Druids were the ones who did the sacrifice. They think that the gods can't be made happy unless one person's life is given in exchange for another's. Everything was run by Druids, unlike, say, the Roman clergy, whose main job was to deal with religion. The Druids had many other jobs in society. The Druids did not have to pay taxes or serve in the military. In exchange, they worked as teachers, scientists, philosophers, judges, and other important jobs. They could also kick people out of society. The Druids were at the top of Celtic society because they were priests, scientists, and judges. The Empire was afraid of the Druids' power. The Romans accepted the Celts' many gods because they were similar to their own. Even though the horrible human sacrifices were a big part of the Romans' propaganda against the Druids, that probably wasn't the main reason why Rome thought of them as an enemy. When Caesar attacked Gaul, it had been less than 50 years since the Romans stopped sacrificing people. Also, the Romans did not have a reputation for being emotional. People cheered as gladiators killed each other in the arenas and criminals were torn apart by wild animals. Everything points to the fact that the Romans were afraid of the Druids' unchecked power over the Celtic tribes and their chiefs. When Vercingetorix, a leader of the Gauls, led a number of Gallic tribes in a rebellion against Caesar's invading army in 52 BC, he probably had the full support of the Druids or was even prompted to do so by them. Caesar's troops in Gaul were almost wiped out by the rebellion because it was so big. When the Roman general got things under control, he told some of the rebellious tribes to kill themselves. Before the legions burned their cities and fields, they killed thousands of people by cutting down their trees. Those who survived died of hunger. 
the last fight. In the year 61, Suetonius gathered his army on the Welsh coast on a cold spring morning. The site was chosen by the governor because it was only about 250 meters from the coast to the island of Anglesey. Tacitus, a Roman writer, says that Suetonius used the tide to get across the channel. He made a fleet of boats with flat bottoms so that the infantry could cross. The riders who came after them waited and swam in deeper water next to their horses. With the boats, the forces had catapults that they could use to throw rocks at the enemy. Back on the mainland, the forces set up what are called ballista, which could fire spear-shaped missiles 600 meters away and kill enemies on Anglesey. Warriors from the island and tribesmen from the mainland were waiting for the Romans, while the Druids cursed the enemy. As the Roman fleet of small boats slowly crossed the narrow strait, hundreds of burning projectiles fired from the Roman artillery behind them filled the air with plumes of smoke. The barrage of artillery forced the Celts to move up the cliffs from the beach. Here is where they gathered to howl at the enemy, sure that the gods would help them. When the first Romans crossed the strait and got off their ships, even the most experienced legionaries hesitated when they saw the druids and fanatical warriors. The soldiers were so scared by what they saw that they couldn't move and forgot to protect their bodies. Suetonius saw that the soldiers were scared, so he told them that they were some of Rome's best soldiers and that they had fought much stronger enemies than the unruly Celts. Tacitus says their generals told them not to be afraid of a group of women and fanatics, and they told each other not to be afraid either. The soldiers, led by the standard bearers, attacked. The Celts met the Romans with a barrage of spears and arrows that hit many of the soldiers in the front line. But the Romans wouldn't let anything stop them. Instead, they charged the enemy with swords drawn, killing anyone who got in their way. The Romans set up a bridgehead quickly so that more soldiers could get to the shore. Now the legionaries and cavalry got into their usual formations and used deadly force to drive the enemy back. Roman sources say that there was a lot of blood during the battle. The Celtic warriors were only lightly armed, so they had no chance against the Roman army, which took advantage of the fact that the enemy had nowhere to run or hide. Men, women, and children were brutally killed, and the Druids were killed at the altars or burned along with the sacred oak trees and groves. Everything that had even the slightest connection to the Druids was crushed and destroyed. This brings us to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time.